Hey, what's up guys? My name is Sam. I'm a commercial photographer and filmmaker based here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And today I want to talk about an age-old debate. Well, not really an age-old debate, but something that I see online a lot and that is, is Canon overpriced? Or to reword it a little bit, is Canon worth the money? So just a quick disclaimer, as of recording this, I am a Canon Malaysia ambassador and obviously there is going to be some sort of biasness when I'm talking about is Canon worth it. But I do want to point out something and that is regardless if you are a X brand ambassador, whatever brand ambassador, if you've been shooting for a camera for a while, you're always going to have some sort of biasness towards it. If you shoot Fuji, Sony, Panasonic, da -da -da, whatever camera brand, you've been shooting it for a while, you've been shooting it professionally, you've been shooting with it a lot, you spend a lot of money in it, you are going to justify and you are going to be biased to it and also on top of that is I identify as a photographer and filmmaker first not a Canon ambassador it is part of my role as a photographer but first and foremost I am a photographer and filmmaker I didn't just stick with Canon because I'm an ambassador there are certain reasons as to why I choose to stick with their bodies and their lenses so that other way I want to talk about the sort of like the catalyst for this video uh really it was this comment that i was reading i posted about like uh the new rf lenses or i posted about some canon stuff and somebody mentioned that canon rf glass is overpriced you can get cheaper stuff and sigma makes the best lenses or something along that line uh, i don't want to go through the whole comment but i want to narrow down on the word overpriced we have to understand, I think, what it means when we say something is overpriced. Obviously, the definition of overpriced is something that is valued more than what it's actually worth. But if you really think about it, can anything really be overpriced? For example, my Mac, my MacBook Pro that's that that I use like every single day to edit my stuff. Some people might consider that overpriced. Some people could say that you could get like a Windows machine for half the cost, and that is true. But for me, the value of the Mac is not just in its power. Yes, you could definitely get a much more efficient machine for less the cost, but the design of it, I, I love the aesthetic of it. And I think that adds value to my personal taste. The screen itself is amazing. The ecosystem, airdrop and things like that. There are a lot of things that make a Mac worth it for me is it expensive yes is it overpriced to me no but for somebody for you if you use a windows machine yeah you could consider it overpriced so what really is what do we mean when we say something is overpriced and in marketing we call this the term well it's based on something that we call perceived value perceived value is something that a customer a value that a customer puts on a certain object or service based on their own experience and looking that at that understanding of perceived value that actually makes a lot of sense from my experience there are generally two kinds of people that i notice that say canon is overpriced uh, number one is people who don't shoot canon obviously and the second type of person is generally somebody who is an amateur uh, a semi-professional or an instagram photographer and what i mean by this is generally speaking these people don't work professionally they don't earn a full-time living as a photographer or filmmaker and let me get something right there is nothing wrong with not being a professional just because you're not a professional doesn't mean that you're not talented or your opinion doesn't have uh, any weight to it it's just that i see that when i see somebody says a comment like RF glass is overpriced and I go to their I go to their profile and I'm not knocking any brands here and you you know you'll say like oh I use a Sony A7C or a, a Sony uh, A6400 and they generally use like Sigma glass they don't really have any first party lenses or really expensive cameras but the kind of people that say like you know if you're always going to be using affordable glass or you don't earn a living you're always going to be looking for the best value and that's where it lies when people say Canon is overpriced price canon r glass is overpriced because yes you can get cheaper alternatives and these kind of people feel like the cheaper alternatives fit their needs more and there's nothing wrong with that it's just that they can't see the value of paying a little bit extra or paying a premium for good quality lenses so the first reason why i think canon is worth it is one of the more important reasons and it's something that i don't see a lot of people talking about and that is after sales service now, I want to give a short story. Um, once again, I'm not bashing any brands. This is just my opinion, and this is my experience based on what has happened. Uh, I used to shoot with the Panasonic GH4, and I used to use the 12 to 35 uh, Vero. It was a good lens, a good camera. However, uh, the autofocusing system on the lens got damaged because I think I dropped it. So what happened is I brought the lens to Panasonic Malaysia, and it took them six months 
to fix that lens. Six months without a professional lens for me is terrible. But after that six months, I got it back. And when I saw it at the, at the servicing center, the back element of the lens was completely scratched out. And it wasn't my fault because it didn't go, it didn't come like that. I only asked them to fix the AF. And I told them like, hey, what, what the hell is this? You know, how, how can there be full scratches on the back? And they were like, oops, sorry, sorry, we'll fix it again. And it took them another three months uh, to fix the back lens element. That's nine months of not having a lens. Can you imagine that if you were a professional photographer, not having your lens for nine months is insane it's it doesn't make it's it it's it's crazy to even think about it now now once again it's not necessarily the fault of the camera or the brand it's just probably the malaysian servicing center here is crap which by the way it is um but contrast to going to canon i dropped my 24 to 105 and it broke the is the is was completely screwed i sent the lens to them and in a week's time i got the lens back nine months versus one week that's that's crazy and for a professional photographer that is so important if my gear breaks on me and i can't get it fixed on time like what well, what's the point I, I i can't i can't have that yes obviously you can say like you should have multiple lenses yes i have multiple lenses i own three to four bodies and i have a mirror of lenses but i'm not going to buy two of the same lenses and so if i can get my lens back as soon as possible that to me is a lot of value as a professional photographer and that's why after sales service is so important another thing is canon also has the cps canon professional services so if i wanted to i actually could have get it, gotten a loan uh, unit for whilst my 24 105 was in the shop being serviced and if you are a professional photographer you would understand but if you are not you know you shoot for instagram you shoot you know sort of freelance here and there it's not really a big deal to you because you can easily go without your camera for maybe a few days or a few weeks. But for us that always need something, always needs our camera and lenses to be ready, that's not really possible. So the second reason why I think Canon is worth it is the image quality. Now I do need to talk a little bit about this. What I believe in is that any camera after 2016, even 2015, 2014 on, uh, onwards, is going to be good. You are going to get amazing image quality regardless of the brand, Sony, Fuji, da 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 da. It, image quality, to my opinion, doesn't really matter anymore. However, what matters is really whether the image fits your workflow. Now, from my experience working with some certain Sony files or most Sony camera files, I find that it's very hard to achieve the look that I personally like. Is that Sony's fault? No, it's not It's not that they produce bad colors or they have bad color science, as people say. I think they have good color science. It's just that it doesn't fit my need. But when I shoot with Canon cameras, the kind of presets that I've made for myself work extremely well. And what that means is that if I take a photo... Uh, a portrait session within like let's say an hour and I've selected pre-selected all my images in camera I can go back to my Mac I can get those images done within 30 minutes because the image the image the color science and everything fits my workflow it fits the way I edit really nicely and that's what I mean when I say image quality is why Canon is worth it for me. It just makes my workflow very fast. I can get out pictures extremely quick. If it's an event, I can get like a full set of event photos within the hour. And that gives me value to my clients. It's, it's like, I have clients come up to me, oh my God, like we've never received pictures this fast that were this good. So you see, it's, it's a lot of these intangible things, okay, intangible, intangible things that make Canon worth it for me. Even the video quality, uh, C-Log3, shooting this on the on the c70 produces amazing beautiful colors that fit my style and fit my editing style you know and once again it's image image quality your color sense or whatever you want to put it that's why canon is worth it for me so the third one is going to be a little bit of a polarizing one and that's going to be design and innovation for me the innovation part is what really sells a lot of it now a lot of you might be thinking wait a minute but doesn't canon have their cripple hammer and i would 
disagree agree to a certain extent you know like the 8k in in the r5 it was pretty revolutionary when it came out 8k in like a small body yes i know that that overheating was there and they sort of fixed it yeah that was that was pretty good however i do want to say that if you are shooting long form 8k content you're not going to be shooting with the r5 you're going to be shooting with within the realms of like a red because if you're going to be shooting such high resolution that means your budget is like really really up there you know you you're not going to be using an r5 for this but that's besides the point the real innovation that i think canon does is in its ability in their ability to make their cameras extremely functional what i mean by this is the best example that i can give is actually going to be their touchscreen now if you've ever used a canon camera you would know that regardless of whatever brand that you use it is going to be extremely simple for you to pick up a camera and shoot why because of their touchscreen this touchscreen when it was first introduced in the 650d which was by the way my first canon camera was such a i i remember using that camera and i remember bring it to school to shoot something on that day and not having much trouble with it you know last previously when you you used to use a dslr that had no touch screen you had to change all these dials and buttons and it becomes very it can become very intimidating when you're starting out and when you have a touch screen where you the number says like the shutter speed your aperture your iso everything is there you can touch to focus and things like that it makes it very very easy to use and even today in these pro level bodies it is something that i am very very grateful is that because it is so easy to use yes of course i'm used to the buttons and things like that but when you're at the back of the screen just being able to touch everything knowing that you can operate the entire camera with just the press of the menu button and the rest of the screen that's basically it even the menu system yeah a lot of people love to bash on sony and panasonic but from my experience it is true the the reason why the menu system on like the panasonic or, or, or sony is complicated to me is because there are things buried inside the menu there are menus and sub menus of sub menus and when canon it's the menu system is just so intuitive it's just so easy to use like there's nothing that's hidden away that you have to click into and click into some more and it just you you know you know that feeling of like frustration when you're trying to find the thing that you want you know it's there but it's not actually there but it's actually hidden inside another menu that's in another menu it's just <laughs> it just gives a lot of unnecessary stress that i don't like on set really all the things that that canon has in their cameras physically and internally just give me a lot of confidence as a professional when i'm shooting on like a heavy a heavy crazy set or a crazy shoot i just know that it's going to work and that's arguably the most important factor for me when i'm choosing a camera or a camera brand as i mentioned earlier the image quality was it's not the most important thing it's everything else it's the usability and that's what i mean by that innovation part of of canon and that's why i think canon is still worth it so the last thing i want to talk about why canon is worth it really is more going to be more of the intrinsic things everything we're talking about is more instrumental value but the intrinsic value for me in canon when when i pick up a, a canon camera and when i shoot with it right it's it gives me the confidence i know it's a bit weird to say uh, but whenever you grip a canon camera it, it you know it's locked in your hand you know you you know that it's it's firm it's solid it feels good and when you are confident with doing something when you're confident on set you will produce better images like you know it's just it's just the way it goes up to your eye the way especially when you have like a lens on it it feels just absolutely incredible Another thing is also when you slap that shutter button if you've used like a DSLR you would know that you you you've taken that photo you know yes obviously uh, certain certain shutters are going to be a lot quieter in the mirrorless ones which are good for certain kinds of situations but when I'm on a commercial shoot right I want to know I took that photo and a lot of times photography comes through things that you experience you know it's a very tactile and that's why i really love film shooting film because it's that tactile experience and the same comes with to canon cameras every time i slap like i press the button and i feel the vibrations in the camera i know that i've taken a photo 
I'm confident that I got the shot that I needed. And that's something that I have yet to experience with any other camera brand out there. Quality of the lenses are a, a cut above the rest in my opinion. Images that you can get are are amazing and I, I, I think that they are well worth the money. And the reason why I wanna say this is because a lot of people think that you can get the same value uh, for with cheaper lenses like Sigma for example. Yes, you could get maybe like 80%, 90% there. But as a professional for a lot of us, it is that extra 10%, it's that actual little bit that makes the most difference. It's that that 10% could be anything. It could be weight reduction. It could be uh, image quality. It could be lack a lesser chromatic aberration. It's those small, small things that you don't notice in everyday use, but when that one particular situation comes up, for example, your bag is a little bit too heavy, or your shoulder is a little bit too pain, or you there's just a little bit more chromatic aberration than you actually need when you're using older lenses, that's when you will realize the value of paying a little bit more or a lot more for that premium. It doesn't make sense. Going back to the idea of perceived value, it doesn't make sense if you're just shooting for Instagram. It doesn't make sense if you're just an amateur photographer. But for professional photographers that people pay like thousands of dollars for that image and that, that one thing where you realize like, ah, man, I wish I could have gotten this. I wish this lens could have done it better. I wish this camera could have done it better. That's why you pay for something that's a little bit more pricey. Uh, that's why you pay for Canon. Okay, sorry, that line sounded a bit too much like an advert, but that's really that's really my opinion. Like when, when we come to like at why why I would pay a little bit more for first party Canon glass, it's really that, that small bit that makes a whole lot of difference. So I do want to end this by saying, is Canon the perfect brand? No. And why, once again, it goes back to the very reason, it depends on what you need. If you're gonna need 100 megapixels, Canon's not for you. Canon doesn't have a camera that has 100 megapixels. Are you looking for a camera that has that retro aesthetic? Probably not Canon because Canon doesn't have any camera that has that retro aesthetic. There is no bad camera brand. Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, every, every one of these camera brands produce amazing images. Every one of these camera brands produce amazing cameras and lenses. But it comes down to your personal preference and experience. I use Canon because of everything that I mentioned. But for you, half of these things or most of these things might not even mean anything to you. Is that wrong? No. Once again, it all depends on what you need. And for me, Canon fits the need the best. And that is why I don't think Canon is overpriced. I think it's Canon is worth it. And that's why I still shoot with Canon. So yeah, I think this was a really, really long video. I'm not so sure how long I've been recording this. It feels like forever, uh, but I would love to know your opinions. Do you think Canon is worth it? Do you, Canon, do you think Canon is overpriced? Uh, let me know what you think about my thoughts as well. I would love to hear some opinions. Uh, start a conversation down below. I'll be more than happy to like chime in uh, as well. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.